Hey, Chef Billy Parisi here. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a New England style white clam chowder or chowder. New England clam chowder start with bacon. And I've got some really ridiculously thick cut smoked bacon. And I've got about a pound. Yes, that does look like a bit, but we're making quite a bit of soup here. So don't get scared right off the bat. I've got a two gallon pot that I'm going to turn on medium to medium low heat. You want this bacon to cook slow because, well, we've got some prep work to do and we don't want to risk burning it. We want to render off that bacon fat. So if you cook it nice and slow, all that delicious fat will come out over time. And also give your cutting board a wash because you just cut raw bacon on there and be sure to wash your knife. Once you return everything, let's get started on prepping vegetables. Got some yellow onions here that we're going to remove the ends on, cut it in half, and then we want to take that outer peel off and small dice them. I'm going to small dice it really because this cooks fairly quickly and we want to incorporate as much onion flavor in as we can. If we were cooking over slower times, I'd cut it thicker as the flavor would come out over time, but because this cooks so quickly at the beginning, we're going to small dice it. And in addition to the onion, we're going to use a little bit of garlic. So press down on the bulb to release some of the cloves. And then what you want to do is really just remove the ends of the cloves. And then using the back of your knife, give them a little smash. This sort of releases it from the outer shell. And from there, we want to finely mince it. We don't want big chunks of garlic. I never really want big chunks of garlic in anything that I cook. So once it's finely minced, just go ahead and add it to the bowl along with these small diced onions. And we're going to release some ribs of celery right from the stalk. And we're going to cut off the ends. If you want to spend more time trimming up the top, it's totally up to you. I'm trying to save some time here. So just remove the ends and then we're going to wash it because, well, it's a root vegetable and it can get quite dirty. So make sure it's completely removed of dirt. We're going to slice it in half long ways first before we slice it the other way. And I'm doing this because when it comes to eating anything, and especially soup, there's nothing worse than having a gigantic chunk of something that you can't put in your mouth. So be sure to slice it so it's bite size and not just so you can only have celery on your spoon, but you can have also clams and potatoes and other vegetables as well. We are also going to add the sliced celery to a large bowl and we're going to go right over to that pot. We're going to give a bacon a little look and as you can see it's nice and crispy brown. Tons of bacon fat in there. Maybe even too much bacon fat. You might need to remove a little bit of that. But for now let's remove those crispy bacon lardons and set them to the side in a little bowl because we are going to use those later. And let's add those vegetables that we just cut up. The onions, garlic, and celery right to that pot. We're going to cook it in the bacon fat. This is going to provide a ton of amazing flavor to our chowder. And we're going to stir it just for a little bit. We want to almost just sweat the vegetables. It's okay if the onions get a little bit of brown. We want them to start becoming transparent. And we're going to get a little closer shot. There we go. Um, of Just about where we're at before we want to add in the flour. We're doing this to make a roux so that it can thicken up the rest of our soup once we add in our liquid. It does take uh, over a cup or so. I did add a few extra little tablespoons of flour. You didn't see it. And then we're going to hit it with Harvey's Bristol Cream Sherry. This stuff is secretive and it's not a secret anymore because I just told you about it. It's amazing. You need to use it for all chowders and soups. It just provides the most amazing sweet sherry flavor. It is a gem in your cooking cabinet. That for sure is a promise. As soon as you add it in there, you'll notice it gets thick. And from there, we're going to add in our clam stock. Uh, clam stock is expensive, so you can use 50-50 clam stock chicken stock. And next, I've got some chopped clams. They're canned. You can absolutely use frozen. The frozen ones are a little bit fresher, actually. Or if you're bankrolling, go buy some fresh clams. But I doubt you'd be able to fill two gallons of soup. Next, we're going to add in some bay leaves, get some of that savory flavor incorporated into our soup. And while those things are simmering together, we are going to get started on our potatoes. After all, this is clam chowder. I've got some red potatoes and I've got some Idaho potatoes. We are going to slice these again so they're bite-sized, but still nice and chunky. 
chowder is supposed to be chunky. But also, again, you want to be able to fit a few things on your spoon, not just a potato and not just a celery. And as I said, I had an Idaho potato too. Traditionally, it's just a white potato, but you know what? I've got a couple things laying around the house that I know are still gonna taste excellent in this chowder, so we're gonna use those. We're gonna add our potatoes to a bowl. We're gonna go right over to that big old pot. And what we wanna do is add it, but add it very slowly. I actually usually dip the front part of the bowl into the soup just so it kind of pours in gently because if this stuff splatters, it's coming on your clothes and it's gonna hurt and it's gonna burn your skin too. So be gentle when adding it. As you can see, it's starting to really thicken up. We wanna cook the potatoes. It's only gonna take about 15 minutes because it's so hot in there. We're gonna come back and I've got some fresh thyme. And like I said before, you finish with fresh herbs, you begin with dry herbs. I'm all about fresh herbs and thyme is gorgeous right now. So we're gonna add some of that fresh thyme right into our soup. Gonna provide some really great flavor for this chowder. Also, it's very traditional. We're gonna season it up with a little bit of salt. Also got some white pepper. Make sure to keep this soup white, not with chunks of black in there. We're gonna add half of the cooked bacon back in there and some heavy cream. This is obviously going to whiten up our soup and provide a little bit of body depth and of course, some delicious fat to our soup. So why wouldn't it be good? And as always, season once, taste twice. It's incredibly important. Try it out, see what it needs. I found that it needed a bit more kosher salt and some more of those natural salts like Worcestershire sauce. And then for a little kick, some Tabasco sauce. Just going to give it a couple little stirs here and I'm gonna set it to the side because I want to sear off some fresh clams for a garnish. So set it to a different burner, probably over low heat or simmering. We're gonna add a nice saute pan to the burner over medium to medium high heat. I'm gonna pour in a little bit of olive oil because we wanna sear these clams and what the goal is to get them to open up. That's when you know they've been cooked. So I've got some little neck clams. They're kind of on the smaller side. I asked the fishmonger to give me that. And be careful because they might have a little flame. Deglaze with white wine. Pour a good amount in there because we're gonna steam these clams open. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic for some flavor. Of course, these should be seasoned well even though they're garnish. Some fresh thyme. We're gonna give those a little bit of stir, incorporate that flavor into there. And then as I said before, we are gonna steam these. So we're gonna put another pan or a little cap right on top until the clams open up. Once they are open, you wanna finish them with a little bit of unsalted butter. Yeah, I know that's a lot, but you're not drinking the liquid, you're eating the clams. This is just gonna provide some great flavor. Season it with salt and a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes. And from there, a little bit of parsley for some color. I'm gonna remove this pan from the burner and it is finally time to plate up this very tasty clam chowder. And you better have a big cup lying around because isn't that just so traditional to serve chowder in a big cup? Once you've got the chowder to the very top, we're gonna to start garnishing with the fresh clams. And two or three should do. Next, with some fresh thyme, a little bit of parsley, some more bacon, and of course some oyster crackers, and a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes, and boom, we're finished. Well, we are finished up, and you know how they say you eat with your eyes. That's exactly what you do here. It looks amazing with the fresh clams. What a cool idea at the end. You don't have to do it, but obviously if you're entertaining or serving to some guests or friends or family even, uh, it's a really nice touch. So let's give it a, let's give it a little shot here. Mm. Man, that's good. That Harvey's Bristol Cream Sherry, I know I said it earlier, but for some reason, it just adds a little bit of sweetness and a little bit of love to this chowder. It's really, really tasty, loaded with clams. I used a lot of stuff that I had left over in the house. I had two different types of potatoes. I had red potatoes, I had Idaho's. It's no big deal. Load up this clam chowder. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. Be sure to give me a sub. Follow my YouTube channel. I've got a ton of great videos on there. For now, I'm gonna keep going. We'll catch up with you next time.